It's been over six years since the Nintendo Switch was put out on the market, and with Tears of the Kingdom being one of the last, if not the last, major release for the plucky hybrid console, it was only fitting for me to finally experience the game that got millions of people around the world excited for the system in the first place. And I'm talking about 1-2 Switch. Just kidding, of course it's ARMS. Alright, alright, no more unfunny jokes. Obviously it's Skylanders Imaginators. <laughs> Okay, you've seen the preview, read the title, you all know what game it is. Cue the Breath of the Wild opening shot. Back in the spring of 2019, about half a year since purchasing my Nintendo Switch console, I finally got my hands on the best game on the system that everyone has been talking about for more than two years at that point. I excitedly popped the game card into the Switch, installed a whole lot of updates that came out since the game's release, launched Breath of the Wild, played about 10 hours, completed the main quests up to the Divine Beasts, which is not a lot as anyone who has ever played the game would know, and gave up. At the time it seemed that there was no specific reason for this, as I quite enjoyed everything that the game had to offer up to that point. It's only a few years later when I gave up playing Elden Ring after spending roughly 15 hours in it, that I realized what my issue was. Both of these games share a similar concept, which requires a certain mindset to fully enjoy it. The freedom. As ridiculous as this may sound, but Breath of the Wild simply overwhelmed me at first, given so many options that I gave up because I didn't know where to start. And that would have been it, honestly, if I hadn't started a YouTube channel and decided to cover two of the newest Zelda installments back to back. So in May of 2023, I buckled up, cleared out my schedule from any other games, and sat out into the world of Breath of the Wild once more. And what can I say, I mean, now I get why this game is arguably one of the best pieces of gaming media ever made, and it easily makes my top 3 Nintendo Switch titles of all time. As mentioned earlier, I'm planning to make this a two-part video, where first I talk about Breath of the Wild and my experience playing it, and then cover Tears of the Kingdom, so be sure to stick around for part 2 if you enjoy this video. What hasn't been said about Breath of the Wild up to this point? What kind of hidden secrets video hasn't been made? Well, considering that new content with tips, tricks and secrets keeps on popping up even six years after the game was released, Breath of the Wild truly feels like an endless experience. I could of course go in depth on the gameplay and how it blends with the world of Hyrule, allowing the developers to deliver the story in many smart ways, but I don't believe that anything I say would come off as something new, original or groundbreaking, and not that it was ever my intention, but still. So instead I would rather focus on my personal experience with the game, what I did, how I approached the presented challenges, and what kept me going this time, well, besides the obvious wish to play before jumping into Tears of the Kingdom. Over the last couple of years, I realized that the older I get, the less I enjoy open-world games with RPG elements, or straight-up open-world RPGs. I can't help but feel that the developers are purposely wasting my time by forcing me to partake in pointless quests, poorly made side missions, and any other trivial activities that you could expect in modern games, all for the sake of increasing the runtime without any regard for the quality or just plain sense in doing so. And it feels so refreshing when a game like Breath of the Wild comes around and literally tells me, play however you like, no question marks on the map, no overloaded UI, no GPS-style navigation system, just you, the world, and everything in it. I will admit, I was dumb and didn't understand what was in my hands four years ago, didn't have the patience, the willpower to give the game enough time to draw me in completely. Because I quit just before arguably the most interesting part was about to begin. I'm not really a fan of using the term an experience to describe a game, as technically any game is an experience. It's like saying bread is bread or swallowing is a part of drinking and expecting everyone to be amazed by your invaluable input into the conversation. But I just can't think of any other word to use in order to explain why Breath of the Wild is so good. Because it's not just about getting everything right or immersing the player, it's about the freedom of self-expression, giving just enough information and tools to spike your interest, but not too much, in order to retain that joyful feeling of discovery.
The Great Plateau where your adventure begins plays the role of this training ground where you get to learn all the basics, gather your first gear that will inevitably break in just a matter of minutes, and set you off given a suggestion for where to go first. Once you're off this plateau, it's go anywhere, do anything, talk to anyone. If you're feeling super courageous, you can even go toe to toe with the final boss straight away. And if that's not the ultimate freedom of choice in the video game, then I really don't know what is. It's only when I realized that nothing except for one quest is mandatory, and I could go and try my luck with it at about any moment, it became clear to me what a Jam Breath of the Wild is. This do-whatever-you-want-however-you-want approach extends to just about anything in the game. Want to complete every quest, try and collect every Korok seed? Fine. Or are you the kind of player who only does the main story quests and calls it a day? You're free to do so too. But it's not just the freedom to choose what you want to do that matters. It's also the almost endless number of options to approach every task at hand that made the experience so enjoyable for me. For example, when going through the first major dungeon in the game, I was faced with a challenge to navigate through a path, stretching across the mountains and filled with countless enemies. I could of course face every one of them head on and spend a lot of time trying to power my way through. Instead I consumed a speed potion and just ran through their lines like I was Keemstar on his morning jogging routine. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Still fast as fuck, boy! This and lots of other tricks really helped me to avoid many annoying time-consuming fights all the way till the very end where my evasion, luck and climbing skills were put to the test as I scaled the Hyrule Castle for the final showdown with Calamity Ganon. He was a bit of a bitch by the way, especially with a little help from my friends. And it's not like the world is barren with nothing to do but run from point A to point B with occasional fights sprinkled here and there. The Kingdom of Hyrule is an amazing place with absolutely gorgeous and diverse landscapes, oozing with personality and filled with different activities to take part in and people to meet. It really feels like a world that lives its own life and doesn't stop existing once I turn off the console. Everyone is doing something, going somewhere. I occasionally would meet the same people across the country with them greeting me and saying, oh, you've been moving around quite a lot too. It's these small details that made the difference and actually encouraged me to sometimes stray off the beaten path to see what's on top of that hill or what's across that river. When I started Breath of the Wild this May, I made the decision that I will not spend a whole lot of time going through the side quests, grinding through the shrines and will mostly do things that would bring me closer to comfortably finishing the game. That meant no unnecessary fighting, as this is one of the least useful things to do in the game, in my opinion. Getting just enough hearts and stamina to wield the Master Sword, only clearing out the dungeons that I absolutely needed in order to progress. Yet still I found myself doing things and going to places that were not really necessary from the plot standpoint, but were just interesting to me. Some would say that I've ruined the experience for myself and haven't really played Breath of the Wild, and they're probably right. I've seen people sink hundreds if not thousands of hours into this game, finding every nook and cranny, discovering every mechanic there is to discover, even buying a house. And that's the thing, this is why this game is so great. It's amazing how respecting the player's intelligence and thinking through almost every aspect of the game can go a long way into creating a situation where there won't be two identical playthroughs, there won't be a feeling that something is force-fed, and there definitely won't be any hand-holding whatsoever. If Nintendo were a cringe company trying to look hip, the motto for Breath of the Wild could have easily been You do you, and I honestly think that it's the best way to describe this game in one phrase. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Surprisingly enough, the main story also had a few touching moments in store for me. Learning about the personal connections between Link, Zelda and the four champions, realizing that most of them are long gone, and are nothing more than ghosts trapped within the confines of the divine beasts that once served their people, but have been corrupted by the Calamity Ganon. I gotta say, it was hard to swallow at times. In fact, a good chunk of Hyrule gives that sad, melancholic vibe of decaying beauty. A once prosperous place lying in ruin and waiting for time to sweep it away. I think it's a bit of a blessing that Link doesn't have most of his memories in the beginning, as I cannot imagine how hard it could be to realize that nearly everyone you've loved and cared for are gone. And all you see is the aftermath of what happened a century ago. Still there's hope as the world keeps on turning and some familiar faces as well as new friends are here to brighten the mood and help our hero on his quest to finish what was started. What simply enchanted me were the visuals and sound. Oh. My. God. I am honestly in love with the soundtrack and I am seriously thinking of getting it on vinyl or CD for my personal collection. It's so rare these days when the art style, gameplay and music blend with each other so well that you get enshrouded in the game world. The subtle, gentle piano picks up the pace and gives way to the rest of the instruments to focus your attention on the occurring events, only to drop back to the calm, soothing melodies once the danger has passed. Every sound, every location is perfect, and made me want to stay in this world longer just to see what else is there to be found. And though I focused on the story during my playthrough, I really want to go back to this magical place. And I have to talk about the character design. I mean, wow. At a certain point, I really wanted to double-check the age rating for this game, as the developers had no business making the Goron so cool. Okay, I'm of course talking about the Gerudo tribe, with their Amazon-like looks and an attitude to match. I'd say that every nation of Hyrule presented in Breath of the Wild is amazing, with everyone having unique features that actually make sense for the region that they live in. And not only are they majestic, but some of them are conventionally attractive too, like the mentioned ladies from Gerudo. Everyone has rules that they follow, traditional arts and crafts that their respective nation is famous for. It all adds to the overall atmosphere, making each region stand out even more. The only thing I really didn't like was the Thunderblight Ganon boss fight. He sucks ass, and is one of the few random difficulty spikes that I've encountered throughout the game. Makes it all the more satisfying when I finally killed the bastard after nearly two days of trial and error. Sure, I can mention the poor performance, draw distance and popping, but it didn't really take anything away from my experience at the end of the day. Besides, there are plenty of people who are six years ahead of me in this department, and I'm already on the verge of beating a dead horse with this video, so I'll pass. I just find it a bit funny that the game that got released on the same day as the Switch was already too much for the little console to handle. But, once again, it didn't bother me that much when playing on the big screen. Just a word of advice. If you're playing in TV mode, never, and I mean never, come up close to the screen when there's text on it. Breath of the Wild is really a case of it's about the journey, not the destination. As the outcome is predictable. Go to the castle, defeat the monster, save the princess, the end. Nothing new or original here. And yet somehow it all feels fresh and exciting, despite the whole story revolving around the concept that the developers have played with since 1986. I mean, if someone decides to reinvent the wheel someday, I sincerely hope that they take notes from the brilliant people behind Breath of the Wild, as the amount of love and care that was put into this game is simply immeasurable. And I think no one would dare call the Legend of Zelda franchise stale after such a monumental achievement in gaming history. Of course, with things that we know now, it's easy to say that the open-ended nature of the story was clearly an indication for a direct follow-up. And maybe that's exactly why I felt this way when the final cutscene played. But I like to believe, and probably this is true, that the developers knew from the beginning that this was going to be a two-part adventure. 
and I honestly can't wait to sink my teeth into the second game. And that's about it for my experience with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. What was your playthrough like? What did you do first? Where did you go? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoy my content, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and remember, only play games that are worth your time. See you in the next one. Bye.